Okay, today we're going to be replacing the uh, hook pinion drive gear in this uh, Elna SU62C. This is the Star Series machine, but basically the SP, the TSP, the hook drive stuff should all be the same. Okay, for uh, uh, this teardown, I'm going to leave this light on. I've got the uh, pedal safely elsewhere. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. But honestly, uh, to do this right, you don't want the machine plugged in. But I'm just going to risk it. Okay, first of all, pull the needle. Needle's out. Okay, let's get this foot off here that'll... So, there we go. A little bit easier to see. Pop bobbin access door open. Snap out the throat plate. Loosen up the screws. And you can see I'm using uh, this little guy. It makes it easier to get these screws started. So... There we are. Okay, next we're gonna pull the feed dogs out of the way. And I'm going to use this little thin, it's, it's profile is small, it's just a little slot head and I'm gonna reach in here and loosen the feed dogs using my offset wrench. There. Okay, they're loose, and I'm just going to leave those little screws in the feed dogs. Set them to the side. Okay, next we're going to uh, pull, the, pull the hook and uh, bobbin case out together. We just break it loose with my little offset, and I'm using a smaller... It's kind of it's kind of hard to get in there, but I'm using a smaller uh, bit, just a slot head bit to get in there, and then we'll reach down and gingerly unscrew it. I 
I brought out another tool. This is just a smaller computer screwdriver. It's just a slot head, but I'm going to use that to finish pulling my the oil screw out of the center of this hook drive. Okay, it's loose. Now, you can see, we can basically pull this out. And you have to see this little escapement. You got to pull that out of the way in order to get it out. And out she comes. This is our this is our hook. And this is the hook worm. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the hook uh, worm drive that uh, engages down below. We're going to get to this gear in a minute. Uh, and then this cam surface is a nylon cam that drives the uh, escapement fingers for the thread. All right, I'm going to take a second and talk about this. Um, this is the hook drive post. It comes up from the bottom of the machine. This plate, this uh, attachment plate, has to be removed in order to uh, get down to the uh, get down to the busted gear. The thing of it is is that this plate is adjustable. And uh, the reason for it is is that the uh, you want to make sure that you're not, if you notice, these are the little cam followers. There's a little follower. Let's see, you can't. Ah, uh, you can just barely see it. There's a little cam follower that rides on the bottom of that nylon cam that I showed you before. In any case, uh, if this plate is put back on and it's not perfectly centered on that post, then the, the uh, escapement fingers are going to want to drive too hard left or right. So what you want to do is you want to get this thing perfectly centered over, the, uh, uh, over this post. There is a tool for it in the uh, uh, Elma service documentation. I don't have it. But I got a pretty good idea. I can, I can put a little... I can put a little, uh, and I might even have a better one. I'll look for a metric one. But uh, it sh you should be able to uh, uh, get this thing nicely centered over this post when we put it all back together. Okay, so we're going to remove this screw and this screw next. Okay, I had to find the, uh, the right... Uh, Phillips bit for this. They're a, it was they're a little bigger than what I've been working with. So anyway. Okay, that's loose. Now, out she comes. And as you can see, the entire bobbin access door and the whole plate and the escapement mechanism all comes out as one. And lo and behold, look what we've revealed. Our gear. And... I'll get you a better picture of this, but you can see where the teeth have been literally chewed off this poor thing. Uh, so, you know, it's just old and said goodbye. But anyway, as I turn it, you can see that it's just got an area that's all gouged out. 
Now, there is a very important point that I'm going to uh, talk about next, but I have to get my little magic marker and uh, we'll continue. Okay, I'm going to stop for a minute. Uh, there's something on this gear that I want to show you, but I first of all want to explain uh, a little bit about how these things work. There are two, there are two cogs in this machine. There is a drive belt that drives off of the uh, flywheel here. Uh, the, the drive belt actually drives the, uh, uh, the needle bar up here, uh, through the clutch on the side. And then down here on the bottom is a little access plate. I'm going to show it to you. This little access plate is how you get to the, to the hook drive shaft. The hook drive shaft is what you are seeing down here. Let me get that a bit closer. The hook drive shaft is what you are seeing driving our hook drive pinion and the shaft, and it also drives the feed dogs. I'm not going to go over there right now, but the feed dog runs off uh, the same shaft. Okay, now here's the thing. The timing of this machine is, of course, out because the hook is disengaged entirely from this gear because it's all stripped out. However, since that belt is totally linked up with this bottom shaft drive and the top, when I put this machine back together again using a procedure, I'm going to show you how to seat the hook and how to make sure you got it right. Uh, when I put it back in, it's going to be in time. The machine was in time before and I haven't had any problems with it. So uh, I expect the, uh, uh, I'm what I need to do is put the new gear on in exactly the same orientation as this old one. But herein lies the problem. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to top dead center. Okay, that's top dead center. And right, so I'm close to the top of the stroke. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this little spring pin. This pin is lining up with the tooth. But let me turn it a half turn over here. This, the pin on the other side, is lining up with a gap in between the teeth. These things are not symmetrical. So, in order for your timing to go back correctly, you have to make sure that this gear, when I remove it from the shaft, it goes back on exactly the same way. And when I get that new gear, one of the sides is going to line up with the tooth, and one of the sides is going to line up with a gap in the t t teeth. And I need to ensure that I get this set the very same way. And here's how I'm going to do it. This is the side that has the tooth. I'm going to take a Sharpie and I'm going to mark that shaft. It can only go, uh, it can only go on either correctly or 180 degrees out. If I put it back in correctly and uh, get the hook put in right, which is another problem which I'll talk about uh, later on when we get the part. But what I want to do is I want to mark the top of the shaft and this mark is going to signify that that's the side that lines up with the tooth. That's the side that lines up with the tooth. I'm going to put another one back here. So as long as I got those little dots facing up, I'm golden. Okay, now this is the part that's probably uh, going to scare people or whatever because you're taking a hammer to your precious machine. 
but you don't really have to hit it very hard. You take it gently. I've got a large pin punch that I'm gonna use to get it started. And then I've got a little tiny one that I'm gonna use to drive it out. So let's get going. Turn it a bit towards me so I can get a good straight shot at it. You can move this thing all you want. Now that I know where it's going to belong, you can move it around however you want it. Just get it so you can knock it out of there. Tippy tappy. Jet, gentle, tippy tappy. I got it. Nah, needs a bit more. Tippy tap tip, got it. Started. Now we're going to use this little guy. As you can see, it's coming out. And it's going to get to the point where the thing is sticking out too far, so you can't turn it anymore, but it's there's enough room down in that corner and just up. There we go. Little tweezers here. Got it, there it is. Little tiny roll pin. It's metric size, but the 1 16th punch will knock it out. And now that I know what the, which side goes where, all I gotta do is just knock that thing off. I've got a little, uh, Okay, we have our uh, we have our new gear here. Now I'm going to show you uh, up close. It's much easier to see on this brand new gear. On one side, or you know, this hole goes right through top to bottom, 180. On this side, you see that the little hole lines up with the gap between two teeth. If I turn the gear around like this, you can see that the hole lines up with the end of a tooth. That's the 180 degree difference that you have to keep in mind. And remember, I marked the hook drive shaft. There it is in between. And I marked the hook drive shaft for the side that has the tooth going to the hole. So that's all that I have to, that's all that I have to remember is I have to mark, I'll take a little marker. There we go. I got a marker. This little mark needs to line up with the mark that I, the mark that I placed on that shaft yesterday. Okay, I've got the thing on. I mentioned uh, earlier that uh, I got out some little tiny Allen wrenches. Uh, uh, this gear is a tight fit. It's hard to get the gear down in here. You, Like you can see, I marked it. I made a bigger mark on it, actually, so I could make sure that I had the proper uh, proper lineup, as I talked about earlier. But... I find that a little Allen wrench like this, once you get it pressed on, a little tiny Allen wrench can be used as a pilot and you can use it to kind of uh, center, the, uh, uh, center the gear over the, uh, over the hole where the pin goes. Okay, I'm gonna 
try with a little spring-loaded center punch. Uh, this is a little center punch. It's got a fairly fine tip on it, and I'm going to see if I can keep this little pin centered in it and get it started. We'll see. This ain't easy, but I mean, it probably would help if you had smaller and more skilled hands than mine. I got these big meat hooks, so anyway, just hold on. Actually, I'm going to do this first. There we go. It's on there. It's a little crooked, but the, uh, the main thing is I've got it started. Okay. The pin is now going down the, uh, down the gallery there in the shaft and it's, uh, it's about to come out the other side. And what you want to do is you just want to drive the pin in so that it's protruding on both sides. Don't overdrive it. But if I do overdrive it a bit, I can tap it back out by turning it to the other side. Uh, it's on its way through, but not quite. Let's give it another tap. Look at that. Okay, we got a little handheld uh, camera here. I've greased that uh, pinion. I don't really know, by the way, I'm just using whatever grease I got, but I want some grease on that gear. Okay, what I'm going to do, it's too hard to see the blasted hook uh, with the uh, bobbin case on. So I'm going to remove, I'm going to remove the bobbin case so I'm just working with the hook. Uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's what's happening. So I'm going to remove this screw over here and this screw over here. And then I'll be able to slide this case off the top, so I'm just working with the hook, and that'll make it a lot easier for me. Okay, let's try this again. I'm going to turn the machine. I'm, I'm, the hook is on the post, but it's not tightened down. It's just sitting on the post, and I'm going to turn this machine by hand until I see that that needle reaches the very bottom dead center of the stroke. There we go. Stopped right there. Bottom dead center. Now, this hook lines up exactly with the needle when I start the engagement of the gear. And I can feel it touching that gear. And the minute that I turn that sucker, it's going to want to fall into place. And I have that little cam underneath that I have to, uh, that I have to mess with. But here's the thing. Now that I've got it started on that gear, I can move. There we go. I can move it. So at bottom dead center, now that I've got it in, let's, uh oh, pop my little screw up there in the center. That's all right. We won't worry about it. Now I have to hold on to this thing, but it's going, the hook is, 
Don't let the hook pop up and out of here. So just hold on to it. There's the hook passing when it's at the top, but this is the stroke that matters. The hook turns two times for every one time that the needle plunges. Okay, here's the money shot right here. Okay, at four o'clock, four o'clock is where the, where the hook position is. You can see this hook is over here at four o'clock and the machine is at bottom dead center right there. Okay, then the machine starts to go up and the needle passes above, or the hook passes above the needle of the eye, or the eye of the needle, I mean, and then that's it. Okay, so this thing should be in time, and now I can see that I've got, uh, I have my, uh, uh, the timing is set, the gear is centered, the cams are working, the escapement cams are working, so I got everything right. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and button it down and I'll put the, uh, I'll put the uh, bobbin case back on and everything. So. One thing I didn't mention, uh, although I mean I think I mentioned it, we're going, but it's very nice to have a small set of... Uh, uh, electronic technicians, screwdrivers, uh, this little slot head here, I've been using it to oil all the little sp spots because my can of triflow is kind of gooned. Uh, but this little tiny screwdriver comes in really handy. You need it for, when I put this, when I put the bobbin case and that plastic ring, basically what happens is, is the plastic ring has to be turned so the flat part of it faces here and then these two screw holes line up here and here those two right here I'm terrible video but right there and right there those guys line up with the two threaded holes in the plastic thing and these escapement fingers are in between here and here just a little note of advice on these things you don't have to over tighten the screws in these machines. Uh, if you do, you're going to make it harder for the next person to come in and fix it. You just want it. I, I don't have an exact torque figure, but it's inch pounds. You just don't have to over tighten anything. Get it good and snug and then give it just a little snooker with the wrench and you'll be happy. Okay, I put these plates on first because I want my I want my throat plate. I'm going to be using this device to get my feed dogs centered properly and operating. Okay, now we're going to test it out. I've got thread in the machine and uh, got a bobbin in there, a couple of different colors, and I'm just going to run it. So this is just a straight stitch. I got my, uh, I had my tension, I had turned the tension all the way down and I forgot to turn it back up. So I've got it on five right now. Let's see how it looks. There you 